Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so um, first, uh, my name is Joseph Atas, and I said I'm from Nigeria, just a brief introduction. I'm from Nigeria, I'm presently studying linguistics here in Kaduna State University. So um, I had the urge or the desire to go into language documentation because I, I found that I could I wasn't very fluent in my language. And then we have a whole lot of people who are like me. So that was the desire. That was what made me to start this language thing. And then along the line, I was able to meet quite a number of people that I don't even understand the language. It will interest you to know that this, this language, as rich as it is, it's, it's, I wouldn't say on the brink of extinction, or it is quite endangered because we do not have that uh, children do not learn the language and then we know they are the next generation the next people to keep this language and they don't learn this language so that is basically the drive why i started this language documentation thing so when i met uh, elp when i got the chance to talk to the people at elp and we started something i had this the whole thing i wanted to do is to create uh, content resource materials, just little, little things that will help people to be able to learn to use every, the things we use in everyday languages, like uh, naming things, like um, just anything, names of people, names of items, names of objects and all that. So that was a basic drive. And then today I'll be presenting a video of my mom cooking, uh, one of our local uh, diet in the block is actually, actually one of the best meals you can have around here. And I hope you all, you all came hungry to eat. Okay. Hello. Morning. Hey there. Okay. So um, I will just go in uh, right to, to, I think, share my video, the video I made. Yes. Anna, I don't know if you could help me with that. Yeah, I think I just made you co-host, so you should be able to share your screen. Or would you like me to share the video? Yes, is you. Okay, I will share it. All right, can everybody see my screen? Yes. All right. That is the wrong video. I apologize, everybody. Let's get the correct one up. Spoilers, you just saw the preview of Peter's video, but we'll see that in a second. All right, can everyone see this? Yes. Great. Long <laughs>
Jesus of the Christ. The second letter that don't come down show. Don't worry, she that to Christ. Just don't worry. 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 Was I beyond it? Was I 
Okay. Uh, Yay. Fantastic work, Joseph. And when your mom said, everyone bring your plates, let me serve you up some, I was like, okay, I'd love to. <laughs> that looked really delicious. <laughs> it is actually, it is. <laughs> uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you all. And I hope that you'll make a, a bigger series of cooking videos for your, your continued language documentation. Yes, I, I, I will. I will. I will I will look at them. There are a whole lot of things to 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 make videos about to document. I will, I will, I will. And then um I don't know, can I say something about the video? Yeah, please. Okay. Uh first uh I would like to apologize for the sound around it. Um, we had to, we, we tried to make um, uh, a real kitchen. We wanted to get a real local kitchen, what we used to have then. That's why we made it outside. We, if you notice, we hear even good bleating, bleating and all that. Um, we wanted to make sure that we had the, the stones, the, the local stove and everything that we had then and then use all the local uh, items that we use in cooking. That was why the video had this noise and everything. But well, basically that's um, part of the culture. Uh, that's how the food is being cooked. The, the whole process is, um, I'm sure if you, maybe the subtitling was not too good, but you see where it said that for that particular beans, uh, you have to wash it three times. And it's the whole process, the whole process. And it talks a lot about the, the language and, and then the tradition. So some of, these are some of the things that I intend to be able to, to document uh, as time goes on. Yeah, there's a lot left to do and I have no doubt you're gonna do a lot of amazing documentation work going forward. Let's all have a yes. big round of applause for Joseph Hatt's work. Oops. Thank you for being <laughs> here you. today. Thank you. All right. So I think next on the flyer was Anna, and I see she has brought a very special guest. Uh, Anna, would you like to introduce yourself and your guest and tell us a little bit about your work? Oh, uh oh, you're muted. Uh, this is my dad, my is a retired primary school teacher. Uh, his name is Ramyonga Ganlar Tangalev. Hello. Hola. Yadra Vinaka. Hola. Yadra. Hola. Hola. Mr. Hall, before I set it off, um, uh, I will explain how I got started uh, in language uh, doing this language documentation work, how I figure it out. And second, I will discuss why this work is important to me and why did I choose my dad to work with me in doing this language documentation work. And the third one will be why did I choose this topic and what lesson I've uh, learned from it. Uh, first of all, uh, in doing this documentation work, it was my aunt who sent me the link to me on Messenger. So she asked me if I could apply for it. And so I did as what she asked for. Uh, 
uh, I went on for an interview. And so, yes, the language documentation training was such an awesome experience for me. Um, secondly, uh, why this work is important to me and why I choose my dad to work with me. Uh, the very reason why I'm really interested in this work was that uh, I've seen that uh, in my village community, uh, most, of, uh, most of our language has been wiped out. And uh, this work is important to me because I need to make more recordings in my own Namosi language and teaching the people in my community on the importance of using our true Namosi language. And I need to train or teach the people in our community on the importance of using our own Namosi language. And uh, uh, to add on, the uh, only person that I choose to work with was my dad who was sitting right there beside me. And uh, yes, I choose to work with him because he understands really well on the importance of doing this language documentation work. And the last one, why did I choose this topic? And one le what lesson I've learned from it? Uh, the topic that I choose was the use of Nomosi language and the cultural material that we normally use in our daily lives. That is first, the kinds of food we eat, uh, the kind of house we have, and the kinds of clothes we wear in our everyday living. Um, I choose this um, topic because uh, I've seen that, uh, I've seen and also learned that there is a close link between language and culture. Uh, these two words, first uh, language and culture are in interconnected, or we can say they are intertwined. From the topic that I choose, I've learned that without language, or we can say if our language is dying out, we will definitely lose part of our culture. And this is really important. Thank you. So shall I show my video now? Yeah. Do you want to share it from your side? Yes. All right. You can share it, um, Dr. I. I don't think I have the most recent copy. So go ahead okay. and share it on your end. I can, I can show it. Hello? Um... You all can see. Hello. My name is uh, Oh, Anna, did you click the little box that said share audio? Yeah, yeah, wait. Hello, um, Bulanakwa. My name is uh, Romeo Nganga Nororotongilewu. Uh, Nongu uh, Nutanganikwa. Me mbaleti chiko na kwavikan. Wataka na na vale. Onumbo mandeli uva na kwavikan. O kimamu na kuina mbumbu kuna kuina moshi. Kimamu tuvo na lomoni vikau. Kuna kimu vegetarian to kimamu. Kimu kani tu na kwavikan na nroka nroka. Na katala ubukumba. Kimi mendo kana kwa vikana ndini. Na mboka, ama wata kana sobu. Na sobu ngoi, na nrote ni mboka. Na ndalo leaves. Nda u sanga kore. E boil ndalo leaves. Wata kana mboka. Na vosi ngilewu, volo ngoro nga kana fruits. Na ui, ndreu, chai na ndreu. Kau muda kata kata tu nak bawa sing tu tu aku, kau lebur mana kau kau bawa sing lebur tu kau nandu aru nak kalau kau tol, kau bawa sing lebur sih ambau betul ka nak pakai kat, dah undu nak bangal, undu nak kuar kuar nak undu nak bilau kat kat kat, undu ni moli, kau ingat tak kau moli, nak kau bawa kan undu undu, mana kau nisong, 
Thank you. Yes, do you have any question about my short video, please? Ah, thank you all for your applause emojis. And thank you, Romeo, for being here. We have, have the star a, of the video with us. I, I have a question. Do you have any questions? Uh, I have a question. Um, yep. Where uh, where was the video shot, please? Where, where was it made? In Namosi. Namosi. From Fiji, yes. So. From Fiji. Ah, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Beautiful. It is a beautiful, beautiful place. Yeah. Yeah. That is where I live. So, do you have any other questions? I'm, I'm waiting. To, of, I'm waiting to, to answer any question from you from your side. <laughs> um, I just want to say that you should be very proud of your daughter. I think we are. Yeah, yeah I and am. yes, and because not all young people are interested in doing these things, but they should. And um, I think we thank you for helping. Uh, with her project and helping uh, with uh, language uh, documentation. Wonderful work. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if we have any questions uh, to the documents that have been presented, I'm waiting for your questions. If, uh, if there's any. I see one more question from Craig in the chat. He asks, is the language taught in schools? 
Yeah, I'm, I'm at school, so it's getting a bit hard to get back to our original uh, language because uh, Fiji is uh, changing very quickly. And now we are in an age of uh, electronics. It's very hard to go back to the normal uh, classroom situations and classes where we have to teach uh, children uh, the syllables. Uh, for, in English, it's easier for them to go back to the vernacular, to the Fijian language. It's a hell of a hard work. Hmm. It's getting even very tougher in Fiji today. I remember, I will if I go back to the early 60s, I, I could recall that there was no road. The teachers had a hard time to travel from uh, from towns from the city of Fiji and Suva to go to the interior schools where I live in the mountains. Uh, it's really, really hard to get teachers up there. And they just traveled to Suva only once in a term, which takes three months. And at the time, the children are taught, uh, they're used to the um, uh, Fijian language, which is the Nomosi dialect. Mm -hmm. And to the 70s and 80s, come 90 and 2000, I uh, uh, find it very hard to go back, very hard to go back and bring that old uh, um, uh, Fijian language to teach them in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And uh, coming, I started teaching in 1993. 1994, sorry. After three years of, teacher, of um, training from a teacher's college, it takes three years. And my first day, I was thrown around in the, to the islands, island schools, to the interior of Vitilevu, the main island, and then back to town. And come 2015, or, uh, 2005 onwards, things are changing very, very fast. It's a hell of a work to teach the children the vernacular, the old Fijian language, which I think will be lost in the next decade or so. So it'll be a, a, a great loss to the Fijians. And now Fiji is going to a stage where we are told to be all Fijians, regardless of race. And how can we bridge that gap to bring back the uh, Fijian um, generation to know their culture and their language. It's a, I think it's a very hard work. If you teach the vernacular in the classroom, the English language is okay to them because it's a normal media in the house or, uh, around uh, the community, in the social gatherings. But to go back to the vernacular, we have to go back to the basics of syllable teaching. Go back to the vernacular first. Yes. yes. Which I think is really hard nowadays for us in Fiji. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to hear that that uh, this is difficult. And the yes. only thing that uh, I think should be done. It's um, to go back to the families, Fijian families, and instill the Fijian language in, um, in their uh, everyday living, in their fa little families at home, in the nuclear families. Now, today I was just hearing my um, two um, granddaughter and grand sister. They have, they used to uh, this uh, phone. In the media, they taught the uh, little, um, was that uh, the olden um, rhymes and song, the jingle bell songs and all those little things. Eh? Uh, I never heard the, the parents teaching them the Fijian language, the normal dialect. Mm -hmm. So that is the, that's why I, I said that it's really hard to go back. Yes. Mm. Sorry to hear, very sad, yes someday maybe yeah we can do something mm. Mm. yeah with a lot of dedicated people like Anna working to, to document and revitalize language it can happen mm. well thank you so much Anna and Romeo
And uh, if anyone has more questions, we'll take a little time at the end, but let's have another round of applause. Okay. All right. And last but definitely not least, let's hear from Peter Sassabule. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me clearly? Uh, yes. my net yeah, my network is quite unstable at the moment, but I hope I can put out something for you guys to see about Roviana. Yeah, my name is uh, Peter Sasabule, Islands, Western Province. So it's the Western part of the Solomons. And uh, my language is Roviana, the Roviana language. It's and it's not uh, the, the New Georgia area in the Western Solomons. Um, I'm very interested to take up linguistics because I was a graduate from uh, the USP, and I'm very happy to have my uh, lecturer here with me, Candid Simon. Thank you very much for attending my uh, presentation. And uh, um, I started out trying to document Roviana in 2019 when I started in USP. Uh, I started collecting all the, the all the studies, all the studies that are done about Roviana, and put, try and put in them um, on uh, on Facebook. So I have a Roviana page, Roviana history page. And then when I uh, when I reached 2021, my final year, I there there's a course that came up that's LN uh, 319. It's about language documentation, and that's that's when I when I saw oh, this is really important because uh, the preservation of a language, uh, preservation of a lang uh, of a culture depends entirely on the language itself. Especially in Roviana, it's a it's an oral uh, oral history which means that it, the history is passed on from one person to another orally. I mean, through verbal, through stories, through narratives. So my mini documentation today is about, uh, is a narrative or it's a, it's a custom story to be exact. And uh, it's, it's a lullaby. And I'm going to uh, put out, I'm going to present it in PowerPoint, if, if you don't mind, Anna. So I want to show you something about my culture and my history first. It's, it will take us about one or two minutes. So I'm going to share my screen now. Uh, yeah, this one. Don't forget to take that audio box. Audio box, yeah, okay. We'll try when we reach the video. So you can see my screen? Everybody can see my screen? Yep. Yes. Okay. So if you see here, it's a Sazinama Roviana. That's the Roviana language when translated. So that's the, this is a passageway into Marovo Lagoon, one of the world's biggest lagoons. So it's, it's this, uh, I took this picture just to show you that. <laughs> okay, so, so Zinama Roviana, the Roviana language. Roviana language lagoons. And they are, one of them is the Vonovona Lagoon and the other is the Roviana Lagoon. It's in the New Georgia group. So if you see the map, that's the whole of New Georgia. Uh, it was widely used as a trade language and a lingua franca for church purposes. So the language has been translated in, into Roviana so that it will uh, it can it can be sung in in the churches around that uh, Munda. Roviana is slowly being re replaced by the Solomon Islands pigeon. I think the pigeon is very very uh, versatile. It's too, uh, it's very strong. And uh, it's taking over everything. Even my kids don't speak Roviana anymore. We only speak Pidgin. And that's the danger of, uh, of having a, a dominant language taking over. So you see, that's the Tomoko. We are also voyagers and also warriors. The ISO code, just to the interest of linguists, the ISO code is 6393. And uh, it's also in a glottologue, so it's there. The language family is, we are Austronesian language. And uh, you can see how it goes down from Malayo, Polynesian, Central East in Malayo, Polynesian, and down to Northwest Solomonic, New Georgia, and West. And the number of speakers in 1999 is 9,000. And the other one taken in 1987 is 16,000, 
second language speakers. Oh, that is a long time ago. I think now it's really, really less. I think it's 5,000 or so. I think we really need a study to really find out that. So uh, the Rovina history, I'm going to go a little bit faster. We are, we are involved in the ritualistic headhunting. Rovina people are termed one of the fiercest headhunters in the region and Rovina warriors are called Varane. <coughs> Take note of the blue. Blue is the Rovina language and the translation is on the other side. So that's a picture of Rovina people many years ago. They paddle long distance to raid villages in the Tomoko. That is the Tomoko, the war canoe. They collect Batu heads as trophies and make Vukvuki sacrifices and Hope or Oru shrines. So that's that's one of the shrines there. Uh, Rovena house design, the Rovena Vetu or house is made with endeve, sago palm leaves and tahula or sewed together. It's just like that one on the right. Another house is the Paele. That's, this is a very important house because it's a ritual house. That is where the Tomoko is accommodated. Special design to accommodate the Tomoko. So you'll see the two, where the two pros go through. <laughs> and Rovena cultural dance, Rovena Pinekpeka or dances, are ritual dances. So we don't have any dances. We only have Fijian dances and we only have Samoan and Tongan dances because we took them from the missionaries. But we have, uh, just one dance that when we come, came back from collecting all the trophies, we have them on the shore. So that's something like that. Uh, it's, we, don't, we no longer have those dances anymore. So food preparation, I think we have the same one. Cooking of food is done with hot patu or stones and covered with elelo leaves in a motu. Just like the, in, we call it motu in Roviana, in Fiji it's uh, lovo. And uh, food just as nungara, Pounded cassava and nali nut can be eaten with makasi or tuna or nito in how food trials. So that's that's uh, one of the oldest photos of people eating from the how the food trial. That's the food trial from the museum in I think in England at the moment. So it's uh, it's in the British Museum. Uh, the villages and hamlets, Rovina Popo villages are located close to the sea. There's, uh, we we love the sea. We we live close to that. Uh, we hardly live in the highlands anymore. Uh, now, most of the villages have modern houses, so we have corrugated houses. That's the only picture I put out. <laughs> and traditional houses are still prepared because they are much cooler to live in than corrugated modern buildings. So this is a pile of mine. Uh, when, when it's really hot, it's 32 degrees, we usually go sleep under that house. Anyway, that is a brief history and culture of Roviana, and I hope you enjoy it. Roviana history is passed on through stories, and stories plays an important role in preserving this Rovena culture. My mini language project is to record narratives. Those narratives are very important. There are stories told before and they're still told today. And I hope that I can have I'll, an archive, maybe a website putting out all the custom stories together so that the children can know about them. The, uh, the video you're about to see is one of many recordings I did for ELP and it's about a lullaby to make children sleep. I hope you enjoy it. I think I'll play it through the PowerPoint. If it doesn't play, well, I'm going to ask Anna to play my copy. Anyway, here it is. Peter, I think the video is very choppy for us. Is it just me? Yeah, okay. Anna, you can play your, your copy. Okay. <laughs> All right, let me pull this up here. Okay, can everybody see it on my end? Great, here we go. Ese poza musi gai. Poza ngoro si ndeli si. Pave mai gwa mu. Arosi na barkalenge rovia na si aro. Ok, sa so vivine ko te vivine ni awe. Sa vivine tanga rosi, vivine na kangeta tamtina. Sa title tan sa vivine asasi, kokiroko. Ok, mboka ala we vivine poni hita? Mboka vivine si rokanwe. 
Kokoan anas keke popoa. Kokoan dias ka ngeta tamtina pa keke vasliana. Keke vasliana no mana huiran standi mali diskoare. Niken dodu totoso si oke zama sakalenge. Gam karutungu lop hola lako sa miho hoi. Hop ho pere miam pananda masa. Neke. Keke rane zama sa karkore. Pain kara hiva ni karwa hopere. Wa. Ke tabeti kalenge karwa hopere. Ne zama sa kara. E pain kara hiva ene rarata hop hopere. Leana. Ma meke mi hola nya sa miho. Wasa vina tatara te kalenge. Hop hopere la sa kara. Me kore sa rimata. Ne zama sa kumburumundina. Que é o via rola, Sirão? Quase como o irmão Dina. Eles amam essa aqui, não é? Leana, ele vai ir nesta cara, mas a sua é essa nica, que não é, e não é, não é que eu te pule se está cara. Que está a ver que é que não é que é massa. Que não é que não é, que não é que é na home home, se soco vai vir cara. Que não é que não é cara, assim. É, ó. Aí a mandar ele pule, ó. Quase onde aí nem pula se tudo ver caras que que não que não que as assim o tom sa home home as a que não ia cara vai ver cara me que não ia ah de valer não ia cara tu só que não me pale que lá não ia cara coisa que não ia de também anga só que não ia que é só que não que não ia vale não ia cara gente na sa calenge gente na Tuo sa hene na sa si, doo ra sa sa mbatu na sa noki, sa bulo bungwat na home home. Kena na sa si asa via, sa si hera na wa, na noki wa sa katangkas. Wanda le vasi na si, wana talota sa tinandia sa kalenge, meke kera. Sa kera ya si na kambo, na kambo tan sa tinandia sa kera. Wa, ke... Kote mangu kera niya sa kinambo tani sa. Kera sa. Sa kinera sa sa taitol tani sa. Koki roko. Na koki roko isi na na natama sa tani sa sa si koki roko. Wasa ke toso kera sa si sage sa kolo. Wasa. Kera sa kalenge na talota na sa enerala ta. Sa kera si wahe. Koki roko, koki roko, homa homa unyuri karu tungu, meke poni na unokyo. Asa sa kinera keke nula turu si asa kosa patu pa masa. Beto me, kera pule, sage me sa kolo, toto so pa nana nene, sage me sa kolo. Kera vinaru a tanisa. Koki roko, koki roko, homa homa guni rikaru tungu, meke poni na unokyo. Sage sa kolo, pare ko sa susuna, me sage hola mai pa, tata meke ke londu talo asya sa, skera binangeta asya sa. Koki roko, koki roko, homa homa guni uri karu tungu, meke ponina no kyu. Gua sa kalenge, meke londu talo ako sa patu sa tuwa sa. Ang kalamay sa kartuna, si lomdori apay si kwa sa kalenge, le londu. Asas que que vive ne malvihite tandi como. Pinde va puputa ser na como. Lea na hola. Antindeli si kosomo vive ne. Lea na hola. Lea. Thank you guys. Nak kerja semua. Nak.
she's uh, 70 years old. She's 70 years old and she lives right next to the shore. I think you see the background. Uh, she uh, lives right next to the shore and I, and I ask her, do you have any more stories that it's, it's important for the kids to know? And she said, yeah, I have a couple of lullabies. But the, the thing is there, some of the stories are made up once. I mean, they, they, they just recently made them up for the kids, but this is one of the oldest. Is it, it has a name of a, of a God that they worship a long time ago. So it, it's titled Koki Roko. Anyway, I hope you didn't fall asleep from the story. <laughs> so, and uh, if you have any questions, you can you can ask them. Yeah. I, I, yeah, you, you can ask I, any questions if you have any. I have a question. <laughs> Inaka, thank you very much. Learn a whole in my language in Roviana. Yeah, that was really good. And I, I'm curious, this is the first time I've seen this video, I think. And I'm curious about, can you tell us why it's so, so bad that it was a snake instead of a fish? Mm. Yeah, uh, like, I think it's uh, like, it, it, it has a much longer version. So I tried to put the video to five minutes. So I asked her, you can quickly cut it down with less singing. Maybe if we have an hour of uh, showcase, then you can have the whole thing. <laughs> but uh, it's uh, the the it's a needle fish. It's a like a sharp mouthed uh, fish, and uh, there's a lot of them floating around the surface. And the, the 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 two boys thought it looked like a snake, so they say, "Oh, I think we'll should be in in my custom. We don't eat that. Like nobody eats snakes. I think yeah, in in Roviana. So uh, when they saw that, whoa! And then and then you can see that she already. Uh, they, they already ate their shares and I think their mother's share as well. So when they walked back, they they came across a snake. So oh, we might as well have to carry something back home. So they took that with them. Uh, it's it's more of a, of, a, of a moral lesson for the kids to have respect for the elders. And they, they, they told it in a, in a custom story way so that when the kids sleep, they can take it in <laughs> and maybe not do it the next time around. Anyway, that's it. Thank you. Oh yeah, Laura notes my people eat eels. Yeah, eels are pretty good eaten. Yeah, I guess it depends. I've tasted a couple, <laughs> but freshwater eel is good, not not a salt one. Yeah. Snake can be pretty good. I guess it depends on the kind of snake, but not everybody eats that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, Laura notes we eat salt ones, saltwater eels. I've never tried that. Anyone else have any questions for Peter? Yeah, yeah I like that snake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think you can you can see quite a few similarities between uh, Fiji and. Uh, Solomon Islands in, in terms of languages, I think. Uh, we, we share the same universal concepts. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's the Austronesian, uh, there's an Austronesian uh, language theory of, of migration yeah. from uh, Southeast Asia. And we have a uh, couple of words that we have, like we are, one of the most uh, universal concepts is the hand, the lima. We, we have lima in Roviana for five and for, for hand. I think in uh, Fiji, they have that as well, for Itauke, I think. And uh, most of the language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So th there's a it's when the the duration of uh, people of us migrating and traveling on bakas when when we go that far, usually the languages change. Maybe a couple of uh, phonemes were taken off, and so we have different words. So I think that's it. Yeah. Beautiful. All right. Anybody else got questions for Peter or thoughts? All right, it was all very self-evident, I guess. <laughs> it was all very clear, Peter. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing some of the other videos you've created this summer. And same for Anna and Josephat. Uh, this is just a small selection of what they did over the last few months. So I'm sure that we'll be sharing some additional videos with you guys going forward.
Uh, oh, and if anyone had questions for Joseph, there wasn't a lot of time for that at the beginning. Oh yeah, Laura. Hi. So don't mind I'm in the dark here. Um, I'm wondering, like you're obviously way out in, is it in the Pacific? Peter? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. It's in the Pacific and it seems like a pretty large island there that you have that you guys are on so the question I was wondering like we're here in Nova Scotia Cape Breton and um, in Cape Breton uh, in Canada we have lots of influence English influence in our Mi'kmaq language and we're First Nations here and we have a constant um, uh, competition against the English language in all different areas like you know it's in it's in literature it's in um tv it's in in everything in internet um what what are you guys using to like um uh, work against that grain to strengthen your language yeah uh thank you very much laura uh uh yes as you can see geographically we are quite large but with many small islands. And we have also have a lot of dialects and there's a lot of languages around close by to Roviana. Like we have uh, one of the pa two Papuan lagoons, languages in, in the Western province. So there, there's a mixture of languages there. Uh, Roviana is, is, is a trade language in mm -hmm. the Western Solomons. That, that means that it is used in markets. Mm -hmm. It's used in, uh, in, especially in church. So it was, uh, it, it I think it's basically it it it, it is uh, uh, preserved in the hymns and in the things that people say in church, but you know it's not really Roviana when it's uh, specifically used as a church language. Uh, there are other languages that are not accepted by the church that we cannot use it in there. So that is those are the ones that are getting lost. Uh, there's a slow attrition happening because of uh, like how they are hardly used like uh swear words <laughs> those ones are, they're no longer used anymore like i know we, we shouldn't be offending people but you know those are languages we can term them languages because they are used a long time ago and they, they remain languages but they're no longer used because the church came in and then just say stop we don't use this set of languages we use these ones so yeah, at the moment we don't have any, we don't teach them in schools. We only speak in uh, when we meet people from Roviana, but when we go to urban towns, we have to speak Pidgin. And even as Rovianas, we converse in Pidgin as well. And Pidgin and English is just taking over. Yeah. Did I answer your question, Laura? Okay. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions for Peter or Josephette or Anna? Anybody at all? I have a question for Anna's dad. I, I wanted to ask, uh, is it common for elders to share their stories like you did? And I guess Peter, that's something I, and also Josephette, I'd be interested in hearing um, after. Uh, Honest dad talks about it, but is it common for elders to share their stories and are young ch are children and young people interested in going to elders to listen to those stories? Yes, our media of, uh, of uh, uh, communication, social gathering is social gathering, yeah? normally around a bowl of cover and that is our media of communication. Otherwise, we'll sit together as a group. So around the town of, of Kava, uh, we used to share stories about uh, things about, especially endangered language, yeah? And it's a great concern. And we have to bring it in every now and then. Because people nowadays are exposed to phones and medias and on TV screens, and there is a danger. And we have, at times, we have to bring in topics about language. And if you bring that in, uh, it's uh, a lot of uh, new generation always ask about the uh, old languages. 
I think, as I've said, it's better to sit together where the people are gathered around and talk about that and try to bring back uh, this kind of talks on language, which is uh, um, not used nowadays. Thank you. Thank you for that. I have a question for all of this, all of the presenters. Uh, what is the most important thing that you want us to know about your language community? That's a, that's a, yeah, go on, Joseph. Maybe Joseph could start? I'm sorry, Joseph. No, we can't hear you. Oh, and actually, maybe uh, Anna's dad could could tell us first. Uh, since I think your audio is okay, Anna. Yes. Yeah. Can I can I can you just repeat that once again? That question once again. Uh, sure. Uh, what is the most important thing that you want all of us to know about your language and your community? It's uh, just like an awareness that uh, this is, this uh, language is, uh, is an endangered language. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, we're losing it. Mm. This exact Fijian uh, words that should be used in uh, everyday language. It's in an end, like you said, it's an endangered yeah? to the progressing um, English language that is a takeover in our culture, in our media. Mm. Uh, especially in videos, we have to put captions or uh, footnotes yeah? mm. so that we can understand what is being said. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, just to just to add on on that, uh, Craig. Uh, yes, the uh, the connection between language and culture is very important, and uh, culture is our identity, and language is the the vehicle that carries and preserves culture. And uh, to be a, a person from Roviana, anybody can speak Roviana if they learn it. But there's a much deeper part of Roviana that is really like you belonging to Roviana that is preserved in the language itself and in the narratives and in the history and what 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 not what people know so I think that 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 link that's what we really want to to, to show the world that we are closely connected to our land our sea especially through the language that we speak so that's 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 the most important thing that we want everybody to know. Like every, every one of us, we have languages. Those languages identify us. They identify who we are. And uh, Roviana, I, do, I am from Roviana. I'm very proud to be a Roviana person because I, it's not because I speak Roviana, but because I have a deeper connection to it. And what expresses that connection is the language that I speak. So, and that, that's why I'm also interested in linguistics. As well, that's why I study linguistics. Um, yeah, I think Joseph I will uh, like to add on there, but that that's 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 how I see it. If I had, uh, just add on to that, I think it's uh, better to uh, let the government uh, be aware of uh, what uh, we want to want to tell them, eh? especially about language and culture. This would allow us to. To go back to our like Japanese Japan is doing that eh? they teach uh, in their own language and uh, Fiji would I, I say that Fiji should do that Fijian government teaching the Fijian dialect eh? Fijian language and go back to culture eh? because uh, so old songs and Fijian songs are getting away they did, it tell stories of our past eh? but the government uh, doesn't um, care about that. Eh? It care less about uh, what we want. Eh? 
it's just move forward. Thank you. Yeah. In in your case, uh, yeah, uh, uh, Romeo, Romeo. Yeah. Hula Romeo. Uh, yeah. yeah. In in your case, yeah, I I've, I've been in Fiji three years. Just I just came back in January, so uh, I I can see that you you have that that uh, it's very difficult to put things out when the government dictates to put this one there. And uh, we have to actually say this and that. Yeah, it's very hard mm -hmm. for you guys. Uh, in my case, in the Soul Islands, we have, uh, ah, there's a lot of languages here. I don't know how many altogether that is. Especially in the Western part of the Solomons, we have uh, different dialects and some of them Austronesian, some of them are Papuan languages. And it's really, really difficult to like have one in place for everybody. So I think in my case, it won't be able to, for the government won't be able to put it out and say everybody speaks this. But they can do that with Pidgin. And uh, at the moment, the, the Ministry of Education is currently working on uh, putting Pidgin as a as, as a mode of instruction in, in the in the classes, and uh, to so that every teacher uses Pidgin. It's, it's funny that everybody speaks Pidgin, and they say the official language is English, but nobody knows how to speak English. <laughs> we only know Pidgin, and so, like, yeah, in in my case here in the Solomon Islands, especially Western Province. We have a lot of languages. The thing is, I think it's the awareness part of it that's important. <clears throat> okay, let, let me just add up a little. Uh, it's the same. It's the same issue we're all having. I don't know if you can hear me. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's the same issue we're having. So it's part of the awareness for my language in particular. Is 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 crazy because if you go online, you cannot even find my language. You you can type to tomorrow. You you cannot find work online. You cannot find any resource material online for my language. What we have is is even an adulteration of the word. It's how people perceive it, and then you you see cargo instead of work, which is the real the real language, the real pronunciation of the language. So it's just an adulteration. So we're trying to, what I want ELP and the world to know is that this language is suppressed. It's, it's, it's not there. If, if, you can't, if there's no visibility online, then this, the language does not exist. People don't even know. You can't find anything. So I just want to create that awareness. I want to be able to make something. Let, let's have resource matter. Let's be able to see this language. Let, let it live. Because the language is actually dying. Let's try and bring it back. Let let children let, let people know about it. You know, we've discussed this with Anna and uh, Amanda. I would just want everybody here to just try and look for anything on Grok. That's my language, and then probably send to me. Maybe I don't know how to use the internet, bro, but I've searched, I've searched, and I cannot find it. So these are the kind of things, and the things that motivated me to come here and basically. Well, thank you all. And thank you, Craig, for that question. If anyone else has any additional questions, I think we've learned a lot from all three or four of you today. So just thank you again for being here with us and taking the time to share your work and your languages. And thank you to everyone who came to, to listen and learn today. We really appreciate you being here. Uh, and it was really a pleasure to get to see some of your work. Uh, I've had the pleasure of seeing some of their videos before, but I know that we're all really looking forward to seeing some more of the things that you produced this summer. So uh, yeah, we'll be posting uh, these videos along with a few others uh, on our various social media channels and our YouTube. So stay tuned. And uh, if you have any questions going forward for any of these folks, you can just email us at ELP and I'll put our email in the chat and we'll pass it along. And thank you all again for being here. And thank you all to Josephat, Anna and Peter for doing this important work in your communities. We're so we're so proud of you. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And a very big thanks to Romeo for being here with us today. Thank you. Thank you all. Have a wonderful evening or day or morning or wherever you are. Thank you. Thank you. Take Thank care, you. everyone. That was so great. Good Let, job. Good Lana. job.
Nice to meet your dad, Anna. <laughs> That's awesome. Are you still recording, Anna? Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to stop it. Oh, we've everyone's almost gone. Uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna end the meeting because I can't figure out how to stop recording. Oh. <laughs> okay, I'll trim this part off. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Bye, well, thanks, thanks for being here. Job. You did awesome. Wonderful work, everybody. It was so great. Yeah. Take care.